It all began at the end of April, when a large cool area of the sun rotated into view. On May 1st, observers saw a cluster of sunspots appear there, blemishing the face of our star and then rapidly growing in size. Over the span of a week, astronomers tracked the cluster drifting across the disk of the sun until on May 8th, it was pointing almost directly at Earth. Then as the sun shone over Europe, the cluster erupted in a violent flash of light. Solar monitoring satellites picked up a burst of X-rays, a signal that they instantly beamed back to Earth. The eruption also threw out a cloud of solar plasma, thus sending a swarm of energetic particles rushing towards our planet. Over the following hours and days, the cluster erupted again and again, producing a surge of energy and radiation unlike any we had seen in decades. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the organization that watches the sun, issued warnings of an intense geomagnetic storm. Aurora, they knew, would certainly light up the planet's skies. Radio networks would be disrupted, as would the constellations of satellites flying far overhead. You might have seen some of the impact. The aurora of early May were spectacular, visible in brilliant colors across much of the world. Even in Hawaii, where the northern lights had not been seen in a century, they made an appearance. Yet flares, even ones as big as this, are short-lived events. A sudden surge of energy washing over the planet, a wave that recedes almost as soon as it comes. Most, those the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration classes with the letters M or C, are little more than ripples, inconsequential events that endanger no one. More powerful flares, however, receive an X designation, and the further up the X class you go, the worse the impact can be. An X2 flare has twice the power of an X1, an X3 has three times the power. The scale is open-ended, so there is, in principle, no limit on how high the number can get. The worst we've ever seen in a few decades of watching came in at X28, almost three times stronger than the biggest of early May. So bright was that 2003 flare, however, that the satellite watching, GOES, was left temporarily blind. Its true power may, therefore, have been far higher, perhaps hitting as high as X40 or X50. On the day it erupted, bursting out from the sun at thousands of miles per hour, the Earth was fortunately placed far from its path. The flare, the most powerful we've ever seen, never even came close to hitting us. If things had been different, as they almost were in 2012, when a massive cloud of solar plasma came within days of hitting us, the consequences on Earth could have been catastrophic. A powerful pulse of magnetic energy would have swept across the planet, sending wild currents surging in power grids and communications networks. Transformers, the key components of the electrical system, would have overheated and fused, knocking the power grid offline across an entire continent. In a worst-case scenario, the Internet itself might have collapsed, creating a global blackout lasting months. The implications that would have had for our globalized planet are almost too awful to ponder. In 2010, a few years after GOES saw the sun erupt in a powerful flare, another telescope was carefully watching a faraway star. In many ways, that star resembled our own. It burned yellow, just as the sun does, spun at roughly the same rate, and seemed, more or less, to be made of the same kind of stuff. In other words, the star, KIC 9944137, was, like the sun, astronomically boring. That, astronomers were hoping, meant that the star might have planets in orbit around it, planets indeed that might look something like Earth. The Kepler telescope was directed to check it out, as part of a regular monitoring of thousands of stars which might host planets. If it did, Kepler would see a repeated pattern of dimming, a sign of a planet moving across the disk of the star. On March 1st, however, KIC 9944137 did something unexpected. Instead of dimming, it suddenly brightened. A massive burst of energy a dozen times more powerful than anything ever emitted by our sun erupted from its surface and raced outwards. We have no idea if any planets stood in the path of that energy. But if they did, they were surely battered by a magnetic and radioactive storm, unlike any we could have imagined. Had such a storm hit Earth, the consequences would have been horrific. Swept by intense magnetic energy, the power systems of entire continents would fall silent. 
their vital and expensive equipment devastated by surging electrical power. Satellites covering everything from GPS to Starlink would be destroyed, their circuits fried by an overwhelming burst of radiation. KIC 994137 is not the only sun-like star we've seen erupt in violent flares. Time and time again, astronomers have spotted them bursting out in rage, pouring scorn and fury on their solar systems. That such events are possible is not in doubt. The only question is whether our own star is capable of doing the same. This, however, is not an easy question to answer. Unlike many other natural disasters, solar flares leave little trace of their passing. There is no impact crater, no swathe of devastated land. Their occurrence, at least in the technologically innocent past, would have been marked only by strange lights shimmering in the night sky. And though astronomical records stretch back millennia, ancient civilizations watch the night carefully. They rarely mention auroras. Even when they do, the records are unclear. Ancient Babylonian texts speak, for example, of a night two and a half millennia ago when the sky glowed red and priests foretold omens of the future. Was that really an aurora? Or did it glow red because of fire or ice crystals glittering high in the atmosphere? It turns out, however, that an accurate and detailed record of the sun's activity has been kept, just not by humans. Instead, the record lies buried in the hearts of trees and trapped deep in the polar ice. There, thanks to the interaction between the sun and the atmosphere, traces of ancient oxygen and carbon can reveal the sun's distant past. That story begins high above the Earth. When a stream of charged solar particles flows towards our planet, as happens almost every day, as part of the solar wind, they first encounter the magnetosphere. This, a vast magnetic shield extending far out into space, traps the particles, directing them towards the polar regions. The result is the aurora, colorful displays of light dancing far above the ground. A second consequence, however, is a slight rise in levels of carbon-14 a radioactive form of the carbon atom. This in the form of carbon dioxide gas tends to make its way into plants and trees or ends up trapped in bubbles frozen into the polar ice sheets. Over the centuries then, trees build up a record of how much carbon-14 is present in the atmosphere. Rises and falls in that record follow the steady cycle of activity the sun traces. A peak every 11 years, a trough five years later. Every now and then, however, that steady cycle is punctured by a sudden spike, the mark of a big solar flare. In 2012, Fusa Miyake, a researcher at the University of Nagoya, took delivery of two Japanese cedar trees, each of which lived and died during the 8th century. In most of the tree rings, the carbon-14 levels were steady, a sign of normal solar activity. In one of the rings, however, she saw an abrupt spike, a spike larger than any other scene. Something enormous, it was obvious, must have happened in the year 774 or 775. Two possibilities stood out. Either a massive solar storm had taken pace, one far bigger than anything we've seen before, or a supernova had erupted startlingly close to Earth. Since nobody noticed a supernova erupting in the sky, and one like that would have been bright, bright enough to outshine the moon, the solar storm seems a likelier story. Later studies, based on trees collected from around the planet, confirmed the event. Something big really did hit the Earth in 774, something that appears to have been unmatched in the last few thousand years. Something indeed that was 50 times stronger than any solar flare we have ever seen in modern times. Could it perhaps have been a super flare erupting violently from the sun? Even if it was, however, the event appeared to be an odd outlier in recent history. Studies of tree rings stretching back 2,000 years showed only one other event in the 10th century that even came close. And nobody alive at the time seems to have noticed the flare. Or if they did, they certainly didn't realize what was happening. In 2022, however, researchers pushed the solar record back by almost 10,000 years to the end of the last ice age. Two more events, both enormous and ancient, turned up. One in 7,176 B.C., and the other in 5,259 BC. More, the researchers think, are probably buried in the data or lost in fallen trees sunk deep into ancient swamps. In all, astronomers now reckon such big flares could happen as much as once every 400 years. That, while not common, is frequent enough that we should worry. 
After all, our industrialized and wired up world has already been around for two centuries. Our time might soon be up. It would start with a warning flashed far from Earth. A handful of satellites maintain a watchful vigil on our sun, monitoring its every twist and turn. When the flare erupts, those satellites will see it, catalog it, and send a message back home. A super flare would be unmissable, a flare so enormous it would blind our satellites. We would thus get at least a brief warning that something unprecedented was on the way. Within minutes, a surge of X-ray radiation would smash into the planet, disrupting and heating the upper atmosphere. Hours later, a tsunami of high-energy particles would reach the magnetosphere. That would offer some protection. The particles would dance in its field lines, creating brilliant displays of the aurora across the planet. The beauty of that moment, however, will come with a terrible price. A magnetic storm of unmatched intensity would rip across the planet, sending electrical grids into chaos. Wild currents would overwhelm transformers, knocking them and the rest of the grid offline. The electrical systems that power the internet, and especially the amplifiers that boost signals, making long ocean crossings, would fry, and with them the internet itself would be in jeopardy. Riding in the storm's wake would be a cloud of radioactive particles, each of which the Earth's magnetic field would send hurtling toward the poles. Astronauts would be forced to run for shelter, desperately praying their radiation shields are able to block the storm. Satellites would fail or go mad as their computer chips are garbled by the intense radiation. Carbon-14 levels would spike, a signature that would, before long, leave a permanent mark in trees across the world. The longer-term consequences would be even worse. A super flare of this kind could cause permanent damage to the electrical grids of an entire continent. That would not be easy to fix, not least because the necessary components are not kept in sufficient supply to restore power across such a large area. The disruption would, a paper in 2014 warned, make a super flare the worst natural disaster to hit in centuries. To restore normalcy, the world would surely need to organize a massive relief effort. But would it be capable of such an effort in the aftermath of such a disaster while lacking the communication and power systems needed to function smoothly? And even if we have the capability, would we have the resolve to pull together? Recent years have sadly shown we are not always capable of acting in our own best interest during a catastrophe. But even when we have, the disasters we have faced have been either small scale or slow moving, giving nations time to respond. A super flare, by contrast, could erupt with just a few hours warning and create havoc on a massive scale. A successful response is far from guaranteed. And all that, of course, is only if the flare is not too bad. The super flares seen around other stars can be utterly devastating events, powerful enough to destroy the ozone layer and cause a mass extinction of life. Nothing like that has ever been seen in the historical record, but neither does anything yet rule out the possibility 